Okay, hi there. Uh, here's a synoptic topic where environmental economics meets economic development. Uh, this is the issue of renewable energy in the Indian economy. So India is one of those countries uh, in the news at the moment. Obviously, it's one of the fastest growing nations in the world. And it's also developing its renewable energy at a, at a tremendously fast pace. It's got the fifth highest installed renewable energy capacity. And the government of India, of course, has uh, ratified the Paris Agreement on Climate Change. However, at the moment, uh, three quarters of all the energy uh, used in India just still comes from coal. The Modi government is committed to increasing renewable energy, but they've also introduced an import tariff on imported solar panels, mainly from China and Malaysia. So there's a criticism there about the, the conflicts between renewable uh, commitments and the import tariff uh, decision. Here's a, here's a, ch a chart showing total renewable energy capacity in India over the last decade or so, and you can see the significant change just over the last two or three years, which has both micro and macroeconomic uh, implications, which of course is what synopticity is all about. Uh, this chart shows energy dependency in the, for India, the percentage of energy use that India uh, requires from imports. And uh, you can see from 2000, for about a fifth, it's gone up to over a third. So India remains energy dependent, and clearly it's a fast growing country. So all kinds of synoptic issues here about sustainability of growth, about the ways in which India might shift to a renewable future. Here's a classic synoptic question using that kind of information. Evaluate the microeconomic and macroeconomic impact on India's economy of changes in the level of renewable energy capacity. So big increase in investment in renewables shown here. What are some of the micro and macro consequences? With micro, you can focus on anything you like as long as it's relevant to microeconomics. So you could, for example, look at profits in the renewable energy sector. Great opportunity for an analysis diagram showing economies of scale as renewable capacity increases. Uh, consider the impact on unit cost and perhaps show uh, the effect on uh, supernormal profit of renewable energy providers. Another aspect you could talk about is to think about the possible effects on the price level of energy for Indian consumers and businesses. If renewable energy becomes cheaper and if those price cuts are passed on to consumers, two big ifs there, then real incomes and effective demand go up and Indian businesses, particularly, for example, the service sector and software and things which uses a lot of electri electricity, Indian businesses will experience lower costs and there's con consequences for those businesses too. However, there's also an impact on the, the other sectors in the energy industry. So there's likely to be a, quite a big shift in energy supply away from coal. Think about the consequences there for output and jobs in the coal industry, the Indian coal sector. I think about the possible structural unemployment that could happen there. You could also take an environmental aspect. If you want to take a market failure approach, that is microeconomics. That's good synoptic analysis. So the extent to which this shift to renewables will bring down pollution, particulate pollution, the extent to which India is able to decouple fast growth from an increase in CO2 per capita emissions. All kinds of issues there in terms of environmental market failure. Externalities diagrams would be great. And the social benefits, perhaps, from the, the switch to clean energy. On the macro side, again, it's normally you go back to your key macro objectives. You can't go wrong if you focus on things like growth, jobs, trade, inflation, competitiveness, that kind of stuff. Well, India, as we've seen, is a net importer of energy. One third of its energy use comes from overseas. So if they can grow their renewable sector, that may well help improve their trade balance or their current account balance going forward. Indeed, India may have the potential for exporting surplus energy. The investment in capacity, point two, you can see that as a source of growth for India. Great opportunity here for an aggregate demand and aggregate supply diagram. The extra capacity adds to long-term aggregate supply. The improved trade balance would increase aggregate demand. And you could talk about the possible multiplier effects from the increase in investment. Thirdly, focus on jobs, a macroeconomic aspect. So there's the, the, the jobs, obviously, in terms of, of manufacturing and installing and training the, the people to work in the, in the renewable sector. 
a lot of renewable energy job, jobs come from the fuel supply that perhaps might uh, might be uh, driving renewable energy growth. For example, bio bioenergy feedstocks. And the long-term impact on living standards and on well-being could well be another macroeconomic focus. So it depends on your exam board how much you have to, to cover. Uh, you could pick one aspect here, the impact on growth and jobs, and develop a, a good analysis to go with it. Obviously, you need to evaluate the likely micro and macroeconomic consequences. So on the micro side, uh, distribution of income can come into it. India is a huge, a vast country. Will the benefits of increased renewable capacity be equitably distributed from urban to rural areas? Uh, there's certainly increased potential for off-grid solar installations, where people have their own mobile grids, if you like, rather than be part of a national infrastructure, and that can often have quite a significant localised effect. Uh, go back to the, the idea of the tariff on solar panels. So you could draw a tariff diagram and think about how that actually initially makes solar panels more expensive and can hit profitability. Focus your microeconomic evaluation on the future for the Indian coal industry, the extent to which there will be increased structural unemployment and the need for improving human capital. Uh, question and challenge the extent to which there is a huge minimum efficient scale with renewables. How big can the renewable sector get? Where is the minimum efficient scale of production? On the macro side, uh, a lot of solar panels and turbines are imported. So unless India develops its own capability and capacity in those areas, which Modi wants it to, initially the short-term trade deficit may actually go up. Uh, so you're reducing your uh, dependence on imported energy, but you're increasing your dependence on imported technology and capital equipment. Who's making the investment in the renewable sector? Is, is it the Indian economy? Is it Indian businesses? Or is there some foreign direct investment into renewables? If so... Where do the profits flow? Well, do these corporations pay their taxes? Do the profits go back overseas? Uh, link uh, inflation to this idea. Unless there are substantial scale economies, a shift from cheap but dirty coal, perhaps to higher expensive renewables, might actually increase the cost of living. And then the wider issue that India is growing at 5, 6, 7% per year. The big valuative question is, will this push towards renewable energy be sufficient? Or does India have to take other steps to reduce its per capita emissions, to reduce its, uh, uh, well, to improve energy efficiency across the economy? So this is, this is what we call synoptic economics. You're taking micro and macro perspectives. No question that what's happening in India at the moment is really, really interesting. It's fascinating. Uh, last year, um, India invested more money in solar power than in coal for the first time. So something pretty big is happening in India, and that's why it's a, a great synoptic topic to follow.